Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, today I'm going to go over using filters on your master bus. Um, a lot of live Ableton musicians will do this trick. It's just nice to have a low-pass filter, a high-pass filter, or something on your master bus that you can use live. Um, it's a super common thing. It's fun to fiddle with it on stage. It's really easy to perform with it. Um, however, I noticed that a lot of people that are doing this um, are putting the filters on their master bus and they're just leaving them on. Um, there's a couple problems with this and I want to go over those problems and, and how you can use MIDI mapping and a MIDI controller to circumnavigate this problem uh, and be able to have them on and off when you want them to be on or off. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and, and observe the problem here. So what I have here is I have this, this audio track um, that's, that's it's one of my songs and it's mastered to, uh, I usually try to get it to negative 0.3. That's, that's kind of the range that I like to have my the loudest possible uh, uh, transients on my, on my waveforms. So go ahead and check this out. I have uh, a low pass filter and a high pass filter on the master bus. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've mapped the Q key to, to their on off switch. I want you to watch this master bus and I want you to, to take a look at how much uh, volume is being added when I just turn these these low pass filters and high pass filters on. We got a almost four decibel spike, and I, I have the low pass filter. All that it is is just no resonance turned all the way up. The high pass filter, no resonance turned all the way down. So the high pass is letting all the low frequencies through. The low pass is letting all the high frequencies through, and that's all. Nothing else has changed. However, it's adding decibels to my to this mastered track. Okay. There's another problem though. I want you to listen closely. I have the filters off. I turn them on. You notice that? Turn them back on. What's happening is that even though these filters are all the way wide open, they still are attenuating some of the lowest frequencies and some of the highest frequencies just because of the way that their ranges are designed. Um, I think that the reason for that is, is Ableton decided that they weren't going to have them be able to reach uh, lower than this full range right here for, for basically the express purpose that a lot of people would continue to turn the knob and they'd be like, well, why is there no range down here? Why doesn't this affect my audio? Okay, so, so as you can see, these are two really important problems that we need to figure out. Okay, so what I have over here is my Fader Fox UC3. And what this is, is it's just, a, it's just a MIDI controller, a continuous CC controller. That's all that it is. You could use anything. You could use anything with knobs, sliders to do this trick. It doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map these. I'm going to turn these filters on. And I'm going to map the uh, frequency to, of the low-pass filter to the slider 1 and the frequency of the high-pass filter to the slider 2. On frequency 1, I'm actually going to flip the range around so that as I move the slider up, it will filter downwards and as I move the slider up on the other one it will filter upwards okay so the third knob I'm gonna have some fun with this I'm gonna map to my resonance control for both of the filters so now I have resonance control and I have control over the filters this is a pretty common setup alright so now when I play my track I can have fun but that doesn't solve our problem We've just got it mapped. The next thing that I need to do is I figured out this nice little trick. You can use this very same slider that you're affecting the uh, frequency of the filter to actually turn the filter on and off. So I'm going to click on the, the power button of my the on-off switch of my low-pass filter and map it to the first slider. And I'm going to do this, the same thing on the high-pass filter. Now, normally when you do this, the ranges that will occur is usually... 64 to 127 okay so what that means is that when I when I push play here and I move my slider that it's going to remain off until I pass halfway through the range of my control uh, control right here my continuous control what we want to do however is we want to pull that number down so I'm gonna open my MIDI mapper we're gonna pull that number down to about four Three or four is a good range. On both the high pass and the low pass, okay? So again, this is just the same slider that affects the frequency is mapped to the on-off switch. Now, what's nice about this is that 
when I want this filter to be off when it's off and on when it, and on when I want it to be on. Okay. What's cool is that like, so now I have my filters and I'm ready to, 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 to play around with this audio. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and push play and you'll notice that the filters are staying off. As I move the controller though, they're going to pass that number four and turn on. Now, what's nice about this is that if I'm on stage, the reason that I have this happening is that if I'm on stage, I can't always look at my controllers and and I don't want to have to play any guesswork. I want to know that if my uh, slider is most of the way down, that effect is off. So as you can see, I'm sliding the slider around a little bit and the filter isn't turning on on either one of these tracks. Pretty nice, right? Okay, and the other nice thing about this is that as long as these sliders are all the way down, I can mess with the resonance, and I'm not adding decibels or adding lower high frequencies or mid frequencies or whatever to these ranges unless I want to, and that means I have to turn these sliders up, okay? So, that has solved the problem of the filters being on all the time. You don't want your filters on all the time unless you're using them. Super important. So the next thing that I want to go over, though, uh, some, something to add to this, just a little uh, thing that, it, that I think is important, is that a lot of people don't know really where to put their, their, their effects and their master bus. Um, and I know this is probably really basic information for some people, but when you use a filter, you're going to add frequencies, okay? I didn't even mean to, and look, we've got, you know, these little boosts happening here. If I add some resonance, we're going to have super boosts happening. I can get up to, as you can see, seven. I had uh, almost eight decibels higher than I than I than I wanted to be. So how do you fix this problem? Well, just grab a limiter and make sure it's the last thing on your track. Um, commonly, some of the best practices that I've had is if you're going to have a limiter, find out what the if you're using mastered music, find out what your music is mastered to. Okay, just take a look. Grab your track, drop it into live, and see this little thing? You can grab this and you can push it up. You can look right here and see what your decibel meters are. Okay, the loudest that this track is ever gonna get is 0.27, so I can just put that in here. Point, negative 0.27, right? So now my limiter is not gonna do any work at all to my master tracks unless I add too much gain. So I'm gonna engage my high pass filter. Now it's doing work. But it's only doing work when I'm messing with the audio. That's the important thing, that you re uh, retain control over your mastered music. Uh, and you, you re retain control over the effects that are on your master bus so that they're not causing clipping um, on you know, PA systems everywhere. Those, those low frequencies that you work so hard to, to mix properly are going to come through right. That high-end air that, that wouldn't come through if your low-pass uh, filter was on but all the way open can still come through your mix. Um, this way you, you retain control over those things. All right. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, today I launched my, uh, my Patreon page. If you're interested in learning about how to support this channel, support me, and maybe even look into uh, some of the nice uh, rewards I have on there. One of them is uh, a pretty awesome thing. Um, I'm offering a music mentorship program for those of you that are trying to get your Ableton Live set ready for the stage. Um, one way or another, uh, thanks for watching uh, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.